hi guys welcome back again to my youtube channel my name is abiola and in today's tutorial we'll be taking the part two of the tutorial i posted a few days back guys if you haven't watched the first part you need to go and watch that part before you watch this one and that video will be linked in the description box as well as in the comment section you have a pinned at the comment section okay so there's something i did not mention in the last video which i want to clarify i am sure you must have noticed that my mono strap or one shoulder fell at the side where we have the root can you see and in the inspiration the mono strap or the one shoulder fell at the other side so take that into consideration whilst drafting your pattern this implies that i should have drafted my one shoulder or mono strap at the other side not the side okay but this is my preference so let's head into the tutorial of today proper in our last tutorial we stopped at the point where we labeled the pattern and prepared it for the slash and spread proper now all we're going to do is to bring a fresh pattern paper and then proceed to use our cello tape the clear cello tape um to hold it in place on the fresh pattern paper because this is the point where we're going to be slashing and spreading okay so now i'll go ahead now to go off camera and um cello tape it properly okay at this point my camera stopped filming but here's what i did i'm going to just go over it again i lengthened the lines or elongated the lines that i made earlier from um the beginning to the end i did the same thing for the second line i did the same thing for the third as well as the last line after which i went ahead to bring in those pieces of paper that we cut in our last video and remember we already labeled them in the last video so i went ahead to spread them by two inches each okay from beginning to the end guys you can spread yours by 1.5 but it might not be as full on the side like the root might not be as full on the on the side you can spread yours by 2.5 but two inches is what i think is okay for me so i'm going to spread everything by two two inches now you see the importance of the line everything has to match so that you know that you're on the right track okay so that's what i did i went ahead to spread the second one same thing by two inches and i'll use my clear paper tape sorry my clear cello tape to hold it in place just go ahead to repeat the same steps for the third the fourth the fifth and the sixth remember we have six pieces of papers okay which we labeled in the last tutorial I also noticed that the paper at the tip of this dress will not be enough so i went ahead to join more paper underneath before i went ahead to also spread them by two two inches each as well and i used my cello tape to hold them in place now you proceed to use your marker to join all the edges so that it forms a really nice curve at that point then after doing that you proceed to this part now you notice that this part does not have not all the edges are even don't be scared about that just form a really nice curve at that point not minding if you cut off the top of some of the um what do i call it now the top of some of the slash and spread just use your um, marker to form a lovely curve there if you notice i'm even drawing the curve on the slash and spread itself just form a nice curve don't mind if you're cutting off anything it doesn't matter the next step is to go ahead and cut off and whilst cutting when i get to this point i'm going to use my ruler to straighten the line and i will also match the curve as well and i will proceed with the cutting after doing this the next step will be to cut on fabric remember the length of my dress is 59 inches plus one inch seam allowance which gives me 60 inches okay and you know crepe comes in by 60 which implies the length of a crepe fabric is 60 inches which implies i can just fold my fabric the normal way and get my 60 inches but if your if your pattern is longer than 60 inches or if your length is longer than 60 inches you'll have to use the other side of the fabric which implies that you're going to need more fabric okay so i'm going to go ahead now to pin my pattern paper onto the fabric okay using my pins okay i also used my clips to hold the fabric in place because i was trying to show you guys on the table ideally it would be nice to just cut this on the floor because it's it's just very big okay so i'm going to go ahead now to cut it out very very quickly okay Thank you. 
after cutting i'm going to go ahead now to unpin the pattern paper from the fabric guys there are two ways you can turn the neckline or the armhole of this um outfit the first method that you can decide to use is to use your bias tape okay or you can decide to cut off a part of the pattern and use it to cut a facing for your neckline or the armhole just for illustration purposes all you have to do is to Bring your pattern paper and fold towards the bust point area or how long you want your facing to be cut it out then use that pattern to cut out the facing you can use to turn the neckline or the armhole area but for me i'm going to be using a bias tape i just want to use the easy route if you don't know how to turn a neckline or an armhole using a bias tape i'll have a video linked in the description box that can help you with that okay here is what i have guys when i was done turning the neckline and the armhole with the bias tape i did that for the front part of the dress and the back part of the dress now i'm going to place them right sides facing each other then join the shoulders using 0.5 inch seam allowance after doing that the next step is to join the zipper allowance area okay and remember the allowance added for this dress is one inch so i'm going to go ahead to stitch that place using one inch seam allowance from beginning to the end if you can't seam to eyeball one inch you can go ahead to mark that from beginning to the end before heading to your sewing machine here is what i have when i was done stitching as i said i also went ahead to iron the zipper allowance area open so that it makes it easy for me to fix my zipper allowance the next step is to loosen to the point where you want your zipper to stop i feel like that's based on preference okay so i would also advise that you work with an invisible zipper because it makes the dress look really chic okay if your fabric has some stretch to it you might not need a zipper at all for this dress because after fixing my zipper at the end of the day I still removed it and my dress was still snug okay so this is me trying to loosen the dress to where i want my zipper to stop so that i can head over to my sewing machine and fix my invisible zipper at this point i had fixed my invisible zipper and i had also gone ahead to stitch the other side using one inch seam allowance okay so after doing that the next step is to create a channel to pass the rope for this Rooch. so what i'm going to do now is to trim off a bit of this allowance by this side just a little bit and i'll also trim off the other one just a little bit so that that place will not be too bulky when i create the channel for the root or for the rope okay to pass through so um what i'm going to do now is to place my bias tape right sides facing the right side of the fabric if you know a bias comes in a way that it has two edges where you can stitch on so on one of that edge i'm going to stitch from beginning to the end if this is not explanatory i also have a video linked to the description box on how you can um, create a channel using your bias tape or even a, a bias you made from your fabric itself so i'm going to have that linked in the description box as well so after going ahead to stitch round ensure that you leave the two ends open because the rope is going to come out from the two ends of the bias okay after stitching the bias round the first time this is the second one which is where you actually create your channel properly so i'm just going to go ahead to close the edge very very quickly okay after doing that the next step is to you know um stitch a rope that we're going to pass through this channel but for me i'm just going to fold my bias into two and stitch on it to create the rope you can as well form your rope from the fabric itself okay but this is what i'm going to be using for today's tutorial so what i'm just going to do is to fold my bias tape into two then continue to stitch i continued to stitch until the rope was about 60 inches long okay yours might not be as long as that but i want to ensure that the rope is able to go around the channel so that when i want to pull the dress i can open it to the end and so that the rope does not get lost in the channel now i'm going to go ahead to pass in the rope through the channel using my safety pin so i'm going to gradually push in the rope through the channel little by little until it goes round now you can see the reason why i said two ends of the bias area has to be open for the rope to come out okay and i also make sure the rope is as like very long so that 
it doesn't get lost in the channel especially when you're trying to put on your dress so i'm gonna have to pass the rope through the channel and i'm trying to reach the dress you're the one that is going to reach this dress by yourself so um the more you reach it the smaller the hole and the lesser you reach it the wider your hole as you can see mine i didn't reach it too much so my hole is a bit wide if you want it smaller you can reach it more so here's what i have when i was done do not forget to hem the base of your dress you can as well use a bias tape to hem the base of your dress one extra tip guys after putting on your dress and after tying the rope okay you're going to have a bit of rope left you don't want that to show so you're going to hide that inside your dress okay